In this lesson, you'll be integrating styles into the chat application. Now, much like we did for the weather web application, I have these styles pre-created, and in this lesson, we'll be downloading them and integrating them into our existing HTML document. Now, for the moment, we only have one page for the chat application. A bit later, we'll be adding a second one where a user can provide the name of the chat room they're trying to join and their own personal username. But for now, we'll focus on just styling the actual chat page, the content shown here. You can download all of the assets we're gonna need for this one over at links.mead.io forward slash chat assets. When you visit this link, it's going to redirect you over to a different URL, and this is where you'll be able to grab the zip download that is chatassets.zip. So I'm going to take a quick moment to actually download it to my machine, then we'll navigate over to the finder and integrate this into our project. So navigate to your finder or your file explorer, depending on your operating system. On one window, I have the chat app project folder. On another, I have my downloads directory. Right here, what I'm gonna do is expand chat assets and in there, we have two folders. We have a CSS directory. This contains a style sheet for the chat application as well as a minified version, which is the same thing, just not meant to be read or edited by humans. It's a little smaller and runs a little faster. And the other directory we have is an image directory. In here, we have a fave icon that's going to show up in the browser tab right here. So let's go ahead and take both of these directories and we're going to bring them over to the public folder of our chat app. So I have the chat app with the public directory. I'm just gonna grab these and move them over there. Now in public, we have both of those directories and we're done with the finder. We can go ahead and close things down and focus on actually integrating these assets into our project. So I'm gonna close this tab and close down the little downloads panel at the bottom. I'll navigate back over to the chat window and we're gonna spend the rest of our time in index.html. We're gonna work through this file from top to bottom, making the changes necessary and the first set of changes will happen right here inside of the head tag. First up, let's go ahead and use title to set up a title for this document. And I'm gonna use something like chat app. This will show up in the browser tab instead of what currently shows up, which is localhost 3000. And then from here, we're gonna go ahead and link the fav icon as well as our style sheet, exactly like we've already done before. So I'll use link for both to link in the icon, the relationship, the rel attribute has a value of icon. Then the href attribute is the path to the icon. That is forward slash image forward slash right here. The only file we have is fave icon.png. Perfect. Next up, we'll take a quick moment to load in the style sheet also using link. This time though, the relationship is that of a style sheet. So right here, style sheet and then href will be the path to that file. Now you could go ahead and load in either of the files inside of there. If you wanna add new features to the app and customize these styles later, you could always switch to this file, the unminified version. But for now, let's go ahead and load in the minified version as it'll load a little faster. So right here, href, forward slash CSS, forward slash styles, dot min, dot CSS. Perfect. Now with this in place, we should see some pretty drastic changes to our application so far. I would expect the title and the icon to show up as well as some styles. Now the styles aren't gonna look great just yet because we'll have to alter the structure of our document and add some classes into the mix, but we should at least notice some change. Over in the browser, let's give things a quick refresh. And right here, what do we see? One, I see my icon. Two, I see my page title, and three, things definitely look different. Now, once again, things aren't completely styled, although there are some styles being applied. For example, if I send my location, 
I can see the disabled style makes the button look different until the location is actually sent. But now what we're gonna do is integrate the classes that the style sheet uses to make all of this look like it's actually supposed to look. So over inside of index.html, that means we'll be making changes to what's right here inside of body. We're gonna add classes and do a little bit of restructuring, adding a few elements into the mix strictly to get the layout we're looking for. The first thing we're gonna do is add a couple of new divs just to create the layout we want. We're gonna have a sidebar on the left and the main chat content on the right. So the first thing we're gonna do is create a div element with a given class. Right here, let's go ahead and set that up. The class for this one, which is used in that style sheet, is called chat. Now inside of here, we're gonna add two new divs, one for the sidebar and one for the main chat content. So right here, let's go ahead and create both of those. The first one is not gonna have any content for the moment. We'll focus on populating that sidebar a little bit later in the course. So right here, we set up the class chat, underscore, underscore, sidebar for that. And once again, no content inside. Down below, the last div we're going to put in this chat layout is for the main content, class equals chat underscore underscore main. And what's gonna go inside of here? Well, everything we have down below. Not our templates, but our messages div, our form, and the button for sending the location. Now, these things will change a little bit too, but for the moment, let's take these three elements, the div, the form, and the button. We're going to cut them out of their current location and paste them right here inside of chat main. Then we can go ahead and just indent them to the proper level. And down below, we're going to remove our little chat app title. We'll bring a page title back in a little bit later. That'll end up showing up in the sidebar. Now, the only thing we have is our chat div and its contents. Then down below that, our templates and the scripts we're loading in. From here, we're gonna focus on adjusting what's inside of chat main. Now, before we do that, we can actually see where we've gotten so far with these styles. So over here in the browser, I can give things a quick refresh and we can see the page is starting to come together. We're gonna have this dark sidebar on the left with the main content on the right. Now the next styles we're going to apply will ensure that everything related to composing messages is sitting down below and the messages take up most of the screen, which is currently not what's happening. So right here, we're gonna make a few small adjustments to what we just put inside of chat main. First up, the messages div. This has an ID allowing us to easily target it from JavaScript. We're also setting up a class for this one. That is chat underscore underscore messages. That's gonna make sure it takes up the necessary space. And down below what we have is our form and our button, and obviously the form's contents. All of this is going to go in one more new element we'll be creating right here, another div just to make sure that we can set up the layout as needed. And this one right here is going to have a class of compose since everything inside of it is specific to composing new messages. We're going to take this, we're gonna copy it and paste it right inside of that new div, adjusting the levels as needed. So there we go. This is the final setup we need for index.html as of now. We have the main chat area, we then have our sidebar. Right here, we have the right-hand side. Here we have our messages up top, followed by the composition elements down below. Now let's make sure that we saved our markup and from the browser, we're gonna refresh things one more time and we should see some major changes. So far, so good. We now have our messages down below. We can send those off and they show up up here as you might expect. Now there are a couple of more adjustments we're gonna make to wrap this video up. I've also provided you with some styles for the actual messages. And the markup for those lives in the templates down below. So let's make a few small adjustments to these as well. 
Right here, we have the root div. All we're gonna do for this one is add a class onto that, and the class for the message is called, appropriately enough, message. Now, the paragraph right here is gonna stay as is, but it's no longer going to contain the timestamp. That's going to live just above in a separate paragraph. So right here, we'll create that separate paragraph, setting up the opening and closing tag, and inside of there, we're gonna add two span elements, which we'll be styling. The first one is gonna be for the user's name. Now, currently, there's no way for a user to set their name. We'll fix that in a few videos. And the other is going to be the date, which we already have. So right here, I'll go ahead and set up the first one. And we can just put a dummy name inside, some user name as an example, just to make sure we see some content showing up. This will be dynamic later. And then we'll create a second one down below for created at right here, adding it in exactly like we had it up above, excuse me, down below. Now we can go ahead and close the span tag. Perfect. From here, all we need to do is set up classes on both of these right here for the first one. That is a class equal to message underscore underscore name. And down below for the second one, that is class message underscore underscore meta. Now with this in place, our text-based messages should be completely styled and we can give that a test before continuing on. So I'll refresh the page. We can see our styles showing up. I'll type something else and try that. Perfect. Now here I was able to send a message with no content. We'll fix that a bit later before the final version of the application. Now, we haven't had any styles for the location messages, so if I send my location, it's going to look exactly like it looked before. We're going to adjust that as well. Right here, we'll take the paragraph from up above for our regular message and paste it in the div down below for our messages that are location-based. Next up, for this div, we're going to set up the class message once again. And inside of this paragraph, all we're gonna do is remove created at with the hyphen. We have the paragraph with the link right inside. Now let's go ahead and test our location styles out. I'm gonna refresh things in the browser. I'm going to click send location and my location shows up styled. Right here I have the link, I could click that and it still cracks open Google Maps in a brand new tab right here with my location pinned to the map. Now that we have this in place, we have our basic styles in place for the chat page. Now, don't worry, we are going to add something over here in the sidebar. A bit later in the class, we'll show the chat room name, as well as a list of all of the users currently in the room. Right now, we don't have any of that wired up, though, which is why we have the empty content over here. We're going to start to address that in the next lesson by allowing users to join a specific chat room, providing a username and a room name. I'm excited to get that markup created, so let's jump right in to the next one.